here who will not sleep well tonight because they didn't get the answer they wanted from Elizabeth on a question. Now is the time to ask it. Yeah. Thank you. Since uh, congratulations for all of you being here, I think it's much more justice friendly than the parliament <laughs> because you see some solidarity. My question is, uh, Bridget Pepe came to the house and put up a sign, Stop Harper. What was, uh, what do you think the members of parliament thought about it and what do you think about the coverage? And if the Bridget had been a male, would there have been a different reaction? Okay. I, I think you know I'm referring to Bridget Pepe. Uh, I'm going to let Elizabeth start and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see you later. Well, it was interesting because actually what she did, her action was during the speech from the throne. So it took place in the Senate, not the House. And there was a sense, I, I would have been much more comfortable, and I, I thought she was very brave. And as soon as I told the media that I thought she was very brave, I was in a scrum, and a reporter from, uh, oh, I shouldn't say where she's from, she said, she a Green Party member? Are you in on it? Did you help her plan it? I said, I just said she was very courageous. I didn't say, I, and I also felt that, frankly, during the speech from the throne was not the right place. In that context, in the Senate, we're not in Harper's room, so to speak. And I thought that the, re the reaction for most people, even from opposition parties, was not the right place, not the right room. On the other hand, I sure spoke in favor of uh, the fact that she was speaking for a lot of people who are offended by the fact that 39% of those who vote can elect a majority government in this country. So that brings us to something I could at least briefly say we have to get rid of first past the post, and then I'll pass the mic. Yeah. to answer about this question on, on the young page who, who was courageous. I think we all agree she was courageous. The point, though, that is being made is that she was a page. She had access to the Senate chamber during the, the speech from the throne, and therefore she kind of usurped her privilege by standing up and doing that. She also was courageous because she knew she wasn't going to be a page after that, <laughs> because she was supposed to be neutral and, and an not an officer of, of the Senate, but at least someone who worked in some a, a neutral atmosphere. But I think, you know, the, the bottom line is, we, as Elizabeth said, and I'm sure Olivia will, will have to say, we agreed that it was the wrong place, the wrong time. She abused her ability to have access to a, a, a chamber at, at that time. But she had guts. Uh, well, very quickly, I, I would agree. She certainly had a lot of guts. And I think what was really important was the uh, the symbol of what she did. It was actually a very simple action, but an enormous risk to herself and her future. And I think what was really important about what she did is the way it kind of resonated with people. It was what everybody wanted to say, and um, so it was the symbolism of it. I think it's very similar to what's going on with Occupy Vancouver. You know, you can disagree with this or that and say, well, they should have done it this way or they should have done it that way. But I think overall, you have to look at what's going on in a bigger perspective and realize what she did, similar to Occupy Vancouver, really is it's, it's, um, it's speaking to something that's much deeper in terms of a discontent in this country uh, and internationally about, uh, about the way our financial systems are working, the way our society works. And I think if you can view it that way, then it's an honorable thing. And it's how we respond to it. I mean, we can debate all day, was it right or wrong, or was it this tactic or that tactic, but if we can see it as a message about what's going on and what we need to do more, that's really what the debate should be about. And I think that's what was really good about what uh, Bridget did. Okay, thank you, Libby. Um, we're gonna have to say goodbye to Elizabeth. Um, this is specifically for Elizabeth. All right, okay, okay. short question, question, and then right. I'm gonna call up a couple um, folks with specific <coughs> questions once sure. you're Thanks, you're Sorry. Thanks. Since you spoke about the CBC, um, I think almost everyone here would agree it would be bad if we got rid of the CBC or privatized it or something. Yeah. But given that we spend a billion or so per year on them, and you know, you brought up some criticisms or some shortcomings about how they are you know, reporting and so on now. Um, can you suggest any way of improving the CBC, any structural governance changes? Well, of course, I didn't mention my personally biggest problem was the Radio Canada and CBC had two votes out of five in whether I should be included in the leaders' debates. They had no rules, they had no criteria, and I think it was, I'm convinced Stephen Harper told them in 11, 2011, as he told them in 2008, that if I was included, he wouldn't show up, but that this time they better handle their communications better. So uh, there was, and both ombudsmen for CBC and Flight of Canada said this was not a decision in the public interest. 
But I am a fierce defender of CBC. And what CBC needs, what public broadcasting needs, is to be fully funded. They should not be, you know, we were in a slippery slope when they started having to take commercial time on TV. It got worse at the point where they had to care about ratings enough to put Wheel of Fortune on CBC. And when you start doing that, you've undermined your raison d'etre, and you start having people saying, well, they're just competing. There's a very, I think it's a, the fix was, I think it's a coordinated effort. It could be random. But certainly Quebec Corps' barrage of access to information requests to CBC coordinated with hearings by with uh, Parliamentary Secretary for Heritage, Dean Del Mastro, they, that committee under the Conservatives have now usurped the role of the Information Commissioner. They've demanded all of the access requests that went from Quebec Corps, obviously a competitor to CBC, to CBC. They've usurped all of, they've asked for all the requests and all of CBC's responses and they have now put themselves in the position of the Information Commissioner as a committee dominated by conservatives to say whether CBC was right or wrong in saying they wouldn't answer all these information requests. So when I say there's likelihood of CBC TV being in trouble within the next 12 months, there's a steady barrage in the House, and I'm sure Libby and, and Hetty can speak to this too, of petitions from conservative MPs saying, my constituents have asked me to table this petition, saying, you know, we don't need the CBC anymore, why are we spending this money? Uh, and you've got the work of the information, uh, and rather the Information Ethics and Access Committee, tearing into the CBC on a daily basis at the behest of Quebec Corps. So I think CBC TV is in trouble. The solution is to adequately fund it so it's protected as a public broadcaster and can fulfill the kind of fun function of, of BBC in the U.S. In, in the U.K. and not have it as, as its model Fox TV in the U.S. Thank you.